work the principles of the seed time and harvest until we work the principles, right? Until the seed remains dormant, until we work the principles of seed time and harvest. Here we go. The first part of it is number one, humility. Think of this, as long as the seed is stored, retained, held or elevated in an elevated state, its future is stalled, it's latent, it's undiscovered. Did you know that there was a 2000 year old date palm seed that was discovered and then it was finally planted in 2005 and it germinated. That means it, it began to multiply and it became a palm tree. Finally, 1 Peter 5 verse 6 says this, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time. He's talking about growing you up out of the ground. Are you kidding me? God wants to exalt me? Oh, some of you are choking on that word aversion, aren't you? The seed must be humbled to the ground to connect with the right ground for its beginning to be activated. And the context of ground here is critical. Put this seed on concrete, nothing's gonna happen. You put it on stony ground, nothing's gonna happen. If you put it in thorny ground, it's gonna get choked. The ground is the only variable in Jesus' parable of the sower. You gotta discern the ground. Humility is lowering the seed, but it is also discerning the ground for the seed. So number one, humility. Number two, death. Now that doesn't sound really good, but listen to this. To have the future, you must die to the past. You must cease to exist to the past. You can't have tomorrow if you don't let go of today. That may sound so easy, but think of it, if it's so easy, why do so many people say trapped? They stay trapped in yesterday. You need to be free from one state to have access to your new living, your new life. Those who try to retain their old carnal nature while trying to accept their reborn life, I've seen those Christians, they suffer. They suffer trying to keep the compromise from the past and pull it into their reborn life. It doesn't fit, it doesn't work. Imagine a butterfly trying to still be a caterpillar and embracing the identity of a butterfly. That is, it's a setup that will never work. That butterfly is doomed for destruction. It requires trust to let go of the past, but the future demands it. It's not, a, it's a non-negotiable, right? This is why Jesus has given us his death. We celebrate his death at communion because it gives us legal access to lay whole, lay down our past, our sins and our failures, but permission to be reborn, to be born again. Romans 6 verses 3 and 4. Or are you ignorant of the fact that all of us who've been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? That's the question. You see, by faith you were planted with Christ. Now verse four, we have therefore been buried with him through baptism into death so that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory and the power of the Father, we too might walk habitually in newness of life, abandoning our old ways, dying to our old ways. Say that word out loud, abandon. You must abandon the old identity to have the new identity in the family of God. You gotta get rid of the old, the, as an acorn would say, you gotta get rid of your old shell. If you're gonna be reborn into a forest, you gotta get rid of that little silly shell. And number three, resurrection. Oh, thank God we've got Jesus. He's a resurrection specialist. Do you know what's amazing about the little acorn? After going into the ground and being buried, it dies, meaning it ceases to be what it is. It was any longer, it's reborn, but no longer a little nut. <laughs> no, no, now the birth of a thousand forests has begun. A mighty oak tree has been birthed. Jesus was speaking to Martha and he said this, in John chapter 11, verses 25 and 26, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me as savior will live even if he dies. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? He's asking Martha, do you believe this? He's asking you and I, do we believe this? Now let's ask ourselves: we'll live even if he dies and we'll never die? Pastor Stephen, what kind of double talk is this? Exactly what we've been talking about. Ceasing to be what you were to be a new creature. Letting go of today 
so that you can have tomorrow. Laying down the past to give birth to the future. Letting go of mortality so that you can have immortality. Humility, number one, bowing low to the ground, submitting under God's hand is true worship. Number two, that death ceasing to be what you used to be, letting go of your way, letting go of your opinion, letting go. And then that resurrection life, being born anew from above, a new creature, not the old acorn anymore. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Pam and I love this verse. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creature, reborn, renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Because of what Christ has done on the cross, we are no longer slaves of sin. Oh, that's good news. You see, that's death in a good way. We are dead to be slaves of sin. We cease to be slaves of sin. Because of what Christ has done on the cross, old things have passed away. Praise God, we cease to exist to those old things, those old con condemning thoughts. There is no such thing as ultimate living without being vitally united to Christ Jesus. Galatians 3 verse 13. You've heard me quote it many times. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, becoming a curse for us.